I was thinking as uh, I was listening to some of them talk just before church, uh, how the, the condition of this country is getting to. Uh, I have to I have to say that uh, over the last uh, couple of days, the baby's been sick, and she's uh, just kind of wanted to lay around. She didn't want to do a whole lot, so uh, I'd lay her, I'd hold her quite a bit, and we'd watch cartoons. And uh, finally, after about ten hours of that, I got sick of watching cartoons. I I thought I got to watch something different, and I went in, and turned TV on, and and uh, started to watch some of the news and see some of the things that's going on in the world, and uh, they're uh, how they're trying to legalize marijuana in uh, in the state of Ohio, and uh, how there's a new uh, TV show uh, uh, that's on about this 14, 15 year old boy that is being raised as a girl, and and how that they're promoting that. And even uh, uh, those that uh, we once looked up to, um, uh, even Bruce Jenner, one that was on the Wheaties box, a great Olympiad, uh, now uh, living as a woman and having uh, her own. You know what? I, I went back to watching cartoons, Brother Phil. I said, this, this trash ain't worth watching. I'd rather uh, just go and watch them. But uh, you do uh, remember her in your prayer. She was uh, very upset with me tonight that uh, uh, she couldn't come to church with me. Um, I tell you, she thinks there ain't nothing in this world like Uncle Jim. And she was crying when I left that she wanted to go see Uncle Jim. She just loves him and uh, loves when he comes over. But I was thinking as uh, they was talking and, and reminded me of the scripture, the book of Psalms in 122, uh, the writer said, I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. And our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. We see that, uh, Brother Frank, that they was on a journey and, and uh, how that they was on this pilgrimage back to Jerusalem. And we see that they had finally made it to where it was that they was going and, and it was a time of celebration and, and a time that they could gather their self together in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to know uh, uh, <coughs> tonight that I am on a journey. Uh, one day after a while my feet will stand inside that city. Uh, I'm glad to know that it is a city. If you look at that where it says it's compact together it's a forded uh, uh, city. There's a great wall built around it. Uh, as Brother Jim and I was talking the other day it seems like anymore uh, uh, that when some Somebody dies, the preacher has a way of slipping them right on in. Hey, but Brother Jim, the preacher don't determine whether they go in or not, does he? But our God does. And I'm glad to know that there is a place that he still says sin cannot come, tears cannot come, heartache cannot come. I'm glad there is a place, Brother Frank, that we'll go one day after a while and that we can stand inside the gates of that city and that we can rejoice forevermore and thank the Lord for what he had done for us in our lives. Aren't you glad uh, that you have your going to a place tonight? I hope uh, that everyone here is on their journey tonight. Uh, I hope that everyone's on their way. If you're not, uh, uh, then this is a great time to start. Uh, everybody's got to start somewhere. Uh, but listen, I'm glad to know tonight uh, uh, that there's been some uh, uh, sometimes I don't know exactly uh, uh, what road I'm taking, uh, um, but I know where the end will lead up. Uh, I know where it will uh, where I'll be when I get to the end of my journey. I thank the Lord tonight that he has never left us without some kind of direction. Even in the bad times, Brother Frank, that he had went before us. You ever have to drive in the snow when it gets real deep? Isn't it easier when somebody's already went through and you can put your tires right in their tracks and go where they went and it gives you a little bit of sense maybe of where you're at? I've been in places uh, where I didn't know if I was on the road or in the ditch uh, because I couldn't see anything. Uh, but when you can put your wheels in somebody else's tracks, uh, it makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, hey, praise God tonight. I've got my wheels in Jesus' track. Uh, uh, he's already made the journey uh, and he's there waiting for me. Uh, I'm glad that one day after a while that I'll go home to be with him. Aren't you glad? If you're glad you're saved and going home uh, tonight, say amen. Uh, amen. I'm glad to know uh, that we have a, a journey uh, that we're on. I want to look tonight in the book of Mark in chapter 2, if the Lord will bless for just a little while, uh, that we could preach uh, just a little bit uh, uh, out of this chapter. I want to look at some things uh, if we can. I appreciate those that's been praying for me. I, I don't know if I've told this uh, recently or not, but, uh, but you may remember uh, uh, that um, 
uh, back uh, just even a couple years ago, uh, that uh, we uh, the place that I worked at uh, it seemed like it was uh, just really good. I loved the job, and I still do. I still love what I do. I just don't love how much I do anymore <laughs> because we have lost some employees, and and it seems like things are so busy. And I was ran into Brother Donnie Hicks yesterday morning and was talking with him for a while, and it's just amazing how busy this life is. Isn't it nice every once in a while to be able to just slow down and be able to uh, uh, just relax a little bit. I went down uh, last weekend. I decided I was going to take some time off for last week and, and I had some time off coming to me and uh, we decided we was going to go to West Virginia and we uh, uh, was going to hang out there for just a little bit. Uh, so we uh, uh, called and said, hey, we're coming down. And they said, well, we're not going to be here. We're going to the beach. I said, well, you know what? We'll just meet you down there. So we went down and, and stayed with them for a couple of days just long enough to get my bald head burnt and, and, and came back. But it was nice to be able to uh, to relax a little bit and we're thankful for that but uh, uh, it's good to be together tonight it's good to be in the house of the Lord uh, and always my desire to be found doing what he would have us to do let's look at the second chapter of the book of Mark and it said and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noised that he was in the house and straightway many were gathered together insomuch uh, uh, that there was no room to receive them uh, no not so much as uh, uh, about the door and he preached the word unto them and they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four and when uh, they could not come nigh unto him for the press they uncovered the roof where he was and and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the, the sick of the palsy laid. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven of thee. And we'll look a little farther uh, as we uh, will preach a little bit. But I want to go back into that first verse. I love how, how even the first two words of this chapter it said, And again... He entered into companion. I thought of how many times uh, that Jesus did something again. Uh, how many times uh, has he been with us again? Uh, how many times, Brother Frank, have we failed him, uh, but he's forgiven us again? Uh, I wonder how many times uh, that we thought we'd never feel blessed again, uh, but again he blessed us. Uh, how many times that we thought we'd never have direction again, but, but again he gave us direction. Uh, even in this world that how our homes have been broken apart but again he has put them back together how hearts have been broken but again he has healed them aren't you glad you serve a God of again aren't you glad that he never gives up on us I'm glad to know tonight that every time that I've had to go back and seek more strength from him he's always been there to give me the the strength that I need but it said he entered into Capernaum or Capernaum either way you want to say it after a short days and it was noised that he he was in the house. You know what that means? It said somebody was talking about Jesus being in the house. And somebody was making a little bit of noise about Jesus being in the house. What are we losing in our church houses today? There used to be some noise about that. I'm glad when there's still some noise in the house of God, when the Holy Spirit will show up. I'm glad that there's noise in the way of singing, in the way of shouting, in the way of testimony. I'm glad that there's still some noise in the God's house. As I said once before, somebody said, well, I don't think a preacher ought to get all red-faced and loud and come out of the pulpit. I said, well, maybe you better not come where I go because that's how when the Holy Spirit starts to move, you can't help but get excited. Aren't you glad? Hey, if I couldn't feel it, I'd have just stayed at the house tonight, Aunt Linda. Hey man, if I couldn't feel it, there wouldn't be no sense in coming together. I can join myself together with any club. I'm glad I didn't come to a social meeting, but I came to God's house expecting to meet with him tonight. Hey man, I love each and every one of you here. I love you with all my heart, but I didn't come to meet with you tonight. I came to meet with my Savior through the Holy Spirit that would dwell amongst us this evening. Aren't you glad? that he still knows. Hey, he probably a lot of people in the world, Brother Jim, that don't know where Hilltop Avenue in Springfield, Ohio even is. But God knows where it is. He's here every time the church is open. He's here when we're not here. I'm glad that our Savior knows us tonight. It said he, it was noised. You know what? I believe there's a lot of things that was in the church a long time before they was in the world. 
I believe getting excited. I believe singing. I believe uh, shouting. I believe all these things was in the church a long time before they was in the, in the, the beer joint. Hey Amen. I'm glad to know tonight uh, uh, that we can still uh, uh, express ourselves uh, uh, in the Holy Spirit uh, uh, because I'm afraid, Brother Frank, that the day's coming uh, uh, where they're going to try to stop that. Oh, you say, well, preacher, you're, uh, you're just reading anything, honey. Uh, you better start waking up. Uh, uh, it's already come to where uh, uh, they want to uh, approve your messages before you deliver them uh, and they want to see your sermons before you ever take the stand. Uh, and it's just a matter of time. I'm telling you, uh, it's Sure, as my face is here tonight, uh, there's going to be changes. Uh, uh, they're going to try to let, uh, hey, uh, they're going to try to make us uh, uh, marry a woman to a woman or a man to a man. I'm telling you right now, uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, if it costs me my uh, uh, freedom and I have to sit in jail, uh, I'll do it uh, and I'll sing uh, and I'll think of Paul and I'll be reminded of how God was there with him too. Hey, Amen. I just have to hope I can sing. And God opens the doors. Amen. He did it before. I believe he can do it again. Amen. Um, but it says here that, that it was noise. It said, uh, but straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was uh, no room to receive them, not so much, uh, as above the door. And he preached the word unto him. And then they came unto him bearing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. I'd like to take the thought for just a few minutes tonight. Who is holding you up? We see here that this man was uh, uh, in his bed. Uh, uh, couldn't get up and do anything for himself. Uh, it took somebody else uh, uh, to carry him to where he was. Uh, hey, listen, if you're here tonight and you're saved, uh, uh, chances are it's because somebody uh, uh, prayed for you. Somebody invited you uh, uh, to the house of God. Uh, somebody was concerned enough uh, uh, to feel that they, uh, they uh, lifted your name up to the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, we see this one here said uh, that there was four of them that had gathered and brought him to the place. Hey, can I tell you, uh, we're constantly saying that we want our loved ones uh, uh, to be saved, our friends to be saved, our community to be saved. But what are we doing to see that happen? When was the last time uh, that three or four of us got together and went out uh, and talked to someone, invited them to church, shared the word with them? Uh, there used to be good old-fashioned visitation. Uh, and we've got so busy that it uh, uh, seems like even then uh, has gone by the way. But I'm talking about when we'll get together and they'll be determined. Uh, you say, how do you know they was determined? Uh, because when they got there, uh, uh, they said they couldn't even get in the door. What could they, uh, they could have just turned around and said, well, we did everything that we can do. Uh, uh, we might as well go back to the house. We can't get in. Hey, praise God, but they said, oh, that's not going to stop us. Uh, they said, we can't get in the door, or we can't get into the window. Uh, we'll go up to the roof. Uh, but listen, even this wasn't no easy thing, because they said they had to break it up. Uh, they had to break their way into the church, uh, or into where he was, uh, and then lift him uh, up there and drop him down in. Uh, hey, listen, I'm glad to know that they uh, uh, had a, such a desire uh, to get him where Jesus was, uh, that they wasn't willing to give up. Until they got him there. Let me go back and look at a few things in the Old Testament. Back in 1 Samuel, Jonathan talking, or David talking to Jonathan here, and said, And David fled uh, Noath and Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, or, uh, Jonathan, What will I have done, or what have I done? Uh, what is my iniquity? Uh, uh, what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? Uh, uh, David talking to Jonathan here and uh, uh, saying, You know, uh, uh, your dad wants me dead. In fact, use my own words. Uh, uh, your father Saul wants me dead. Uh, and he said unto him, God forbid uh, uh, that, sh that thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small. Uh, um, but that he will show it me. And, and why should my father hide these things from me? It is not so. And so Jonathan said, oh, I think you're overreacting, or overreacting to my father. Uh, he hadn't said anything. And if he was going to do this, uh, uh, he would have said something to me. Uh, and it said, and David swore over and said, uh, thy, first, uh, thy father certainly knoweth uh, that I have grad uh, found grace in thy eyes. Uh, and saith, let not Jonathan know this, uh, unless he be grieved. But truly as the Lord lives. 
liveth and, the, and my, thy soul liveth there is but a step between me and death and listen I believe tonight that we are fooled to think that Satan is going to knock on your heart's door and tell you that he wants back into the place that he used to dwell now the Bible said that Jesus will stand and knock said behold I stand and knock but listen Satan is going to do everything he can to slide his way in as quietly as he can and to try to be unnoticed until the place that he has taken a boat in your heart before you even knew what happened. Donaldson said, oh, no, if my dad was going to do anything, he would have told me if it was big or little. Hey, listen, Satan's not going to spread it around that he's trying to get into your life. He's not going to spread it around that he's trying to get into your church. He's not going to spread it around that he's trying to get into your family. But listen to me as sure as I'm standing here tonight, he wants to do all of those things. He wants to be wherever God's people are so that he can destroy them. But listen what it said and said then Jonathan said unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. Aren't you glad tonight, Brother Frank, that you have some friends, that you have a church family, that you know without a doubt that you could call at any hour and they would be there for you. Whether it was 2 o'clock in the morning and you needed some uh, someone to pray or maybe it was 2 o'clock in the morning and you needed some kind of a help, I'm glad to know that somebody would be there for me. Let me tell you, I've got a couple friends in this life. Now, I've got some people that uh, uh, if I would call uh, in a convenient time and they didn't have anything else going on, uh, they would probably come to where I'm. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, uh, when it's late uh, and it's about five degrees out and the snow's falling uh, and it's dark uh, and someone calls and says, I need you. Are we ready to go? Let me tell you this. My daughter, my middle daughter, She's a, she's dating this little preacher. I love him to death. I just think he's the greatest little kid there ever was. I, I don't tell him I said that, but I think he's a good kid. He's, he's a preacher. His daddy's a preacher. His grandpa was a preacher. And I just like, just like his life. I've seen uh, the life that he lives. And my daughter, she, she's uh, grown up in the house, and she knows how it is. And but I was thinking that as I was coming down here on the scripture, and and I remember uh, last year. He might hear like football. I love to watch football. I do. I really do. I remember last year it was Super Bowl Sunday. I'd been to church, come back, had all my stuff ready. I had my popcorn, I had my snacks, and I had my big tall drink of soda, and I got my big easy chair, that big recliner, uh, back in my bedroom, and, and I just got a new uh, big screen TV, and I eased that old chair out, I, and just as soon as it got in that laid out position, the phone rang. I thought for a minute, boy, I don't want to answer this. I answered it, and they said, Brother Clay, this is so-and-so, and our mommy just died, and She's here at the hospital, and the family's here, and they really would like you to come and have prayer with them. You know what? It wasn't a decision for me at all. It wasn't a decision for me at all. I said, God's people needs me. But I told my daughter, she I was getting dressed and going back through, and she said, Dad, what are you doing? They knew I was very excited. They said, what are you doing? I said, I've got to go to the hospital. They said, but the game's getting ready to start. I said, sissy, get used to it. I said, you're going to date a little preacher. You better get used to it because this is what your life's going to be like. Hey, God's people needs us sometimes, Amen. and we need to be there for them. Yeah. Now listen to this. You say, well, those people didn't do nothing for me. Those people ain't even been good to me. Let me read you something out of the book of Job. And it said, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, that the Lord said unto uh, uh, Eliphaz, the uh, Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of uh, me the things that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go unto thy servant Job, and offer up uh, for yourself a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept lest I deal with you after your folly, and, and that uh, ye have uh, spoken of me the things which is right, thy servant, uh, or like thy servant Job. He said, I don't even want to talk to you right now. I don't even want to hear from you right now. He said, you go make a sacrifice, talk to Job. You let Job pray for you. Boy, you ever make your mom and dad so mad that they didn't even want to look at you for a minute? 
I said, I don't even want to deal with you right now. Get out of my face. That's, that's a good thing, really, now that I'm old enough to realize that. That give them a few minutes to calm down before I come back in the room. But we see here, it says, since so Eliphaz and the uh, Temanite and uh, Bildad the uh, Shuhite and Zophor the uh, Naamanite uh, went and did according to the Lord commanded unto them. And the Lord also accepted Job. He also lifted up Job's face. And it said, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Job had been through some terrible things. The Lord had allowed Satan to tempt him and to uh, uh, come against him in every hand. And we see even to the place that even Job's wife uh, told him, why don't you just curse God and die? Uh, his friends came to him, uh, but instead of trying to help they uh, accused him of, uh, uh, of these different sins and wanted to know what it was uh, that he did to, to bring this upon himself. Uh, but said that even then, Job prayed for his friends, and it said God turned his captivity. God brought him out, and he delivered him. He gave him freedom when he prayed for somebody else. Sometimes we like to waller in our own pity. We like to just get down, and, and we just like to uh, have those... Uh, 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 pity parties for self and, and wonder why we're going through these things and, and nobody will understand and nobody's ever had it worse than I have. Uh, I remember one time uh, I, I may have shared this before too uh, but um, one time my wife uh, she, I was trying to get her uh, we, we burned a lot of wood in the winter time uh, trying to save a little money and, and there was a time that she called me and, and she was just really frustrated. She said I have been trying to get this fire going uh, for three or four hours. I can't get it to do anything. Uh, and she said what can you do to help me I said here's what you got to do I said go into the kitchen she said okay I said right there beside the stove there's a drawer she said okay I'm there I said open that drawer up she said okay what am I looking for I said now there's an electric bill she said boy you're smart Alec I said that ought to be some motivation for you to be able to keep on going sometimes we've got to look past these things I'm telling you, I told my wife, now I'm a Buckeye born and bred. I love Ohio. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But boy, I'm telling you what, if you've ever been down 77, when you go through that tunnel, and you come out into Virginia, boy, if that ain't what heaven looks like, I don't know what does. My goodness, so beautiful, them rolling hills and, and the farms and the cattle. Man, I thought this has got to be the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my life with my natural eyes. I just absolutely loved it. But sometimes we got to look past those things. Sometimes we got to look past the problems that's in our lives today to see what it is that's coming down the road. And you know what? I could, I know when it comes to exercising and, and losing weight, they're always telling us, you need, to, you need to exercise. You need to lose some weight. Well, yeah, I know that. I know I would feel a whole lot better if I was 30 or 40 pounds lighter. The only problem is, is the amount of work it's going to take to get me to that point. If I could snap my fingers and be there, that'd be great. But there's going to be a lot of work to get me to that place. But you know what? All it's doing is making us stronger. It's given us more endurance. It's given us a more of a desire to get through the, the other side. I'm glad to know that, uh, that whatever that God brings us to, uh, uh, that he's already seen on the other side. Uh, he already knows that we're going to make it. Uh, and he's there to lift us up if we fall. He said he turned his captivity when he prayed for his friends. These four men here tore the roof back, wrapped him out in. And, they said when they, and when Jesus saw their faith, you know, sometimes that's all he has to do is see our faith. Sometimes all we have to do is ask. You ever have, well, in my children sometimes, they'll be, uh, I'll, uh, you know, be driving and we'll be coming from somewhere and they'll kind of get real quiet, kind of pouty, and, and I'll say, well, what's the matter? Well, you went right by that McDonald's, didn't stop and get me nothing. I said, well, you didn't say nothing. I didn't know you wanted anything. I guess they think I'm just supposed to assume it. I'm supposed to read their minds. Sometimes they, they'll do that, though. They won't even ask, but then they'll want to get upset when they don't get it. You say, well, that's kids. No, that's Christians, too. Amen. Somebody say amen. You know I'm right. 
You know, sometimes we just expect God to take care of everything. We don't want to have to ask for him. You know why? Because we have to humble ourselves a little bit and go before the throne of grace and ask God for his help. We just want to stuff ourselves up with pride and expect God to do it. But praise God, every once in a while, we have to just ask, and he will do it for us. He said, by your faith, by you saw your faith. And he said to the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven of thee. But there were certain of them scribes sitting there, and they reasoned in their heart, Why did this man thus speak blasphemy, who can forgive sin but God? And immediately, when Jesus perceived that his spirit, that they were so reasoned within themselves, said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart, whether it is easier to say that um, thy be sick of the palsy, uh, thy sin be forgiven of thee, or to say, Arise, and to take up thy bed and walk, but that ye know um, that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. He saith unto the sick of the palsy. Hey, sometimes we don't always get the answer that we're expecting, but we'll always get the answer that matters. Sometimes we won't, uh, things won't work out the way that we had planned, but I can promise you it'll always work out in his will. It'll always work out for the best in, in, in the way that God sees fit. And yeah, I believe sometimes uh, there's, there's some things that we know as fathers, as, as, as uh, uh, husbands or uh, mothers, and, and uh, uh, that there's some things you just don't do. Um, my two old little, little girl, uh, there's some things that I can trust Sarah with. I can let her get in the car and drive to Manna and do those kind of things and come back, but I'd now put my two-year-old in a car and let her try to take off her son because I know she can't handle it. You see where I'm going with this? God's looking down. You say, well, why does he get more than I do? Because God knows you can't handle it. You ain't proved yourself yet. You ain't grown enough yet. You ain't had enough faith yet. You haven't got strong enough yet, and when you do, and then he will, uh, 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 he will trust you with those things. You say, well, why is it that it seems like um, the others get blessed more than I do? Hey, I don't believe God blesses one more than the other. I think some of us just uh, uh, just uh, receive it better. Sometimes we've got to get our, ourselves out of the way. I, I often think of those, uh, those, and I don't mean this disrespectful at all. Please know that I don't mean this disrespectful disrespectful but you know what I run around with an uh, with an older crowd I don't run around with people my age I spend most of my time with the church with older preachers uh, with uh, family I spend very little time with people my age because they don't have the same uh, desires as I have. They don't have the same uh, uh, spiritual convictions that I have. Uh, they don't have the same uh, uh, goals that I do. So I like to spend my time with people that's going where I'm going. Amen. And people that I know when I need them, they can lift me up. And you know what? Grandma, one of the smartest people I ever met, and she didn't have a bunch of big fancy words, but she would uh, say things that made a whole lot of sense. One of her sayings was, if you run with the wolves, you'll howl like them. You know what? That makes a whole lot of sense. If you run with the world, you'll act like them. I promise you that. But if you'll spend your time with God's people, You'll be strengthened like them. Amen. I thought uh, how important. Well, you know, when uh, young people will come and get saved, one of the first things I tell them is get you a group of Christian friends. Don't go back to the same worldly activities and same worldly friends that you've got. They're going to rub right back off on you. But get you some good Christian friends that will hold you up. Aren't you glad tonight? I bet if we would think about it, everyone here knows somebody that they could call in a time of need. And I would imagine it's some, probably a lot of it in this church, knowing that they could call in a time of need. I just wondered not. Who's holding you up? Aren't you glad for good Christian friends? Let's stand across the building tonight.